Hello everyone! So for today, I will be teaching you how to solve any maximal flow problem without using any application software. So first off, we should know our objective. And that is to find the maximum amount of substance that can flow from a point to another point in a network. So here are our steps in our maximal flow technique. Step number one, choose any path from the start to end of the network flow. Step number two, find the arc with the lowest flow capacity that is available going from a source to a sink. Step number three, this lowest flow capacity we have found in step number two is subtracted from the direction of source to sink while it is added in the reverse direction. Step number four, complete the addition and subtraction process to find the first iteration. And to cap all our steps, we will be repeating steps one to four until all paths have at least one zero flow capacity from a source to a sink. So let's begin by using this example. So as you can see, we have six nodes here showing the flow capacity going in and going out of each node. In this example, node 1 is our starting node and node 6 is our finishing node. So to start our algorithm, step number 1, choose any path from start to end of our network flow. So I've chosen 1 to 2 and 2 to 6 as our starting path. So that's our step number 1. Step number 2, find the arc with the lowest flow capacity that is available going from a source to a sink. So looking at this path, we will be choosing between 3 and 2. And choose the lowest. The lowest flow capacity is the 2. So step number 3, this lowest flow capacity, which is 2, is subtracted from the direction of source to sink, while in reverse direction, it is added. Therefore, 3 minus 2 is equal to 1. 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. 2 minus 2 is equal to 0. And 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. So after completing the subtraction and addition process, we will find the first iteration just like on the right side of our screen. So the next question is, can we find another path that has no zero flow capacity going from a source node to a sink node? And the answer is yes. So in this next step, we will be using the path 1 to 2, 2 to 4, and 4 to 6. And that is our step number 1 for our second iteration. Step number 2 again is to choose the lowest flow capacity. So looking at 1, 1, and 1, having the same values, our lowest flow capacity is obviously 1. For step number 3, this lowest flow capacity is again subtracted or added depending on the direction. So 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. 3 plus 1 is equal to 4. 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. 1 minus 1 is equal to 0 and 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. And again, step number 4, complete the subtraction and addition process to find our second iteration. So again, ask yourselves, can we find any other path that has no zero flow capacity going from a source node to a sink node? And the answer is again, yes. So using the path 1 to 3, 3 to 5, and 5 to 6. And that is our step number 1 
for the third iteration of our maximal flow problem. Step number two, choose the lowest flow capacity. So among 10, 2, and 6, the lowest flow capacity is 2. Step number three, this lowest flow capacity is subtracted or added as usual. So 10 minus 2 is equal to 8. 0 plus 2 is equal to 2. 2 minus 2 is equal to 0. 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. 6 minus 2 is equal to 4. And 0 plus 2 is equal to 2. So for our third iteration, we now find this format of our network model on the right side of our screen. So go, going back to the question, can we find any other path that has no zero flow capacity going from a source node to a sync node? So let's find out. 1 to 2 is not a path since 1 to 2 has a zero flow capacity. So let's try another path. Path 1 to 4 is available. 4 to 2 is available. 2 to 6 is not available. So let's try another path. 1 to 4, available. 4 to 6, no, not available. 1 to 3, available. 3 to 5 is not available. So as you can see, we cannot find any other path that has no zero flow capacity. So what happens when all paths have at least one zero flow capacity from a source to a sync node? At that point, we are now able to find the maximum flow by summing up all the lowest flow capacity we have chosen in step number two. Therefore, remembering all the paths that we have chosen from step one, from the first iteration to our third iteration, the paths are as follows. One, two, six, with a lowest flow capacity of two. One, two, four, and six, with a lowest flow capacity of one, and the path 1, 3, 5, and 6 with lowest flow capacity of 2 with a total of 5. Meaning, this 5 is our maximum flow for our network. So thank you for watching. That's all for today.